The Emoji Movie is like ordering a hamburger from McDonald's. It's not horrible, but it's the most tasteless thing you can order on the menu. I went into Emoji Movie expecting it to be a cinematic disaster. I actually ended up having a decent time with some aspects of the story. More specifically, the character of Jailbreak I thought was a pretty positive role model about being true to yourself. But then again, this one character doesn't excuse the lazy writing and awkward humour thrown in here. I find it kind of fascinating how the Academy decided to nominate the Boss Baby, especially over films like Lego Batman or Cars 3. It's almost as if Oscar voters don't watch these films and just nominate the films which gather the most online chatter. Oh wait, like Emoji Movie, I don't hate Boss Baby, but there's not really anything in here I could say was worthy of being told. It's just a fine kids movie, I guess. Sony's third crack at the Smurfs is no better than their other films. I can understand why they pivoted to animation this time, but there's a certain charm about the live action ones where if I was in the mood for the Smurfs I'd choose them over this. I remember hating Captain Underpants around the time it came out. I think it was down to not liking the cartoony comic booky looking style of the film. In more recent years though I have grown to appreciate this particular style of animation. I think the strongest aspects to Captain Underpants is its over the top energy and surprisingly funny humour. But I think there's a lot to be desired in terms of story. John Cena's Spanish Bull film was another okay film from 2017. There really isn't any 2017 animated films I hate, but for some reason I find a lot of these films just okay. Sure, this would lean a little more positive than the others, but again, it's not something I choose to re-watch all that often. Lego Ninjago isn't a brand I was familiar with before this movie, but colour me shocked, this film turned me into a Ninjago believer. I quite enjoyed this film, and to be honest with you, most of this is down to the father and son dynamic between Gargamel and Lloyd. I really didn't expect a Lego movie to pull on my heartstrings, but this one did. I really enjoyed the first Despicable Me, and I even like number two. On saying that, I just don't think the third one is anywhere near as good as the previous two. I kind of blame this film for my excitement being low on the fourth movie coming out later this year, but I do think that our retro style villain in here is a peak illumination villain. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why on earth are you ranking Nutjob 2 so high? Well, let me explain. This is not a good film, and I know that but we all have these terrible films which we've grown up with loving. These are what the nutjob films are to me. This is hands down the best Batman we've ever had in my opinion. They perfectly captured the most fun elements of these Batman films, mostly by making this a parody on everything Batman stands for and I love that. I had an amazing time re-watching Cars 3 last week. As much as I'm a Cars 2 defender, this should have been the direct sequel to the first Cars. It feels very in line with that film whilst adding an extra level of groundness. It's almost as if Cars grew up with its audience. The thing that gave Coco a slight edge over Cars 3 for me though is the emotional value and world building put into play here. Pixar captured the land of the dead in such a vibrant and fun way where it makes us want to visit and in a weird way decreases our fear of death. To me this afterlife looks more like a paradise. The emotional moments in here always get me and Ernesto's cold-blooded decision to poison Hector's drink is pretty dark for a family film. 